This morning, I woke up and I went to the bathroom and I shaved. Actually, I sat in a chair while my grooming machine shaved me and brushed my teeth, fixed my hair, washed my face. Then I left for work in my flying wingsuit. I almost got into an accident because I ran into a police and fireman in their wingsuits going to an apartment fire. Luckily I avoided it though and I made it to the seaport where I got on an underwater bus that was pulled by whales that transported me across the canal. But then after I disembarked, I walked over to the building where I work, I poured myself a cup of coffee, sat at my desk, and attached a couple of electrodes to my head through which I controlled a giant machine. You know, typical modern life. At least it would have been if Jean-Marc Cote had his way. Jean-Marc Cote was a French illustrator around the turn of the century, and he did a series of drawings for the 1900 French World Exposition that tried to predict what the world would be like in the year 2000. He was off a little bit. Predicting the future is hard, but there's one guy that's been scarily accurate, and his predictions for the next 50 years are gonna blow your frickin' mind. Aaron Robinson, Ryan G, and Conan Skyfire all asked some version of this question. What does the future hold for the next 20 to 50 years? Predictions about the future are usually more a reflection of the time that they're made in than the actual future itself. That's why predictions around the turn of the century always involve pneumatic tubes and machines of some kind, whereas predictions made in the 50s and 60s had everything being nuclear powered. So it's no surprise that today's predictions about the future are heavily centered around information technology and computers. What's different about computers though is that over the last several decades, they followed a very clear pattern of exponential growth. And nobody understands this pattern better than Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil got his start as an inventor. He invented the first CCD flatbed scanner and was a pioneer in voice recognition technology. He famously created one of the most popular musical keyboards of the 80s, the Kurzweil keyboard, that was the first to accurately recreate the sound of a piano. He's written seven books, received 20 honorary doctorates, and been given honors by three US presidents, and in 2012 was named the Director of Engineering at Google. In over 30 years, he's made predictions that have proven to be insanely accurate, down to the year he said it would happen. In fact, his predictions have a success rate of 86%. He predicted the collapse of the Soviet Union. He predicted a computer that would beat a world champion chess player by the year 2000. It happened in 1997. He predicted the rise of internet use at a time when very few people were actually on the internet. He specifically predicted wireless internet usage. He predicted text-to-speech converters for the blind by the year 2009. He predicted wearable computer technology. And he predicted all this back in the 80s. By the way, back in the 80s, I predicted that I would have an Oscar by age 30. <laughs> His method for making these predictions was based on the law of accelerating returns. I've talked before about exponential growth and how Moore's law has accurately predicted the growth of computer processing technology over the last 50 years. Now, there are a lot of people who are arguing that there's going to be an end of Moore's law pretty soon, and that's a totally valid argument but we'll talk about that in another video. For right now, in the purpose of talking about Ray Kurzweil's predictions, we're just gonna assume that Moore's Law is gonna continue into the future. So what Kurzweil does is he simply follows the exponential growth according to Moore's Law and then extrapolates from that what advanced technologies would emerge from that kind of processing power. For example, if you know how powerful a computer is gonna be in five years and you have a good idea of what that computer could be capable of. So his predictions have something of a structure to stand on, a structure that's been proven correct for several decades now. As for what that structure means for our future, let's jump ahead to 2019. Kurzweil believes that by 2019, autonomous cars are gonna be pretty common on the roads of industrialized nations. Now you may be thinking 2019, that's just a few years down the road, is that possible? I would argue, yeah, yeah, it's very possible. We've had self-parking cars for several years now and Tesla famously created Autopilot, which allows the car to basically drive itself at highway speeds. I talked about this at length in a video about a year ago and you can check that out for a deeper dive, but just to give you an idea of how much this technology has changed just in the last year, in January, a guy named George Hotz, this hacker dude, he converted his Acura into a self-driving car using only stuff that he bought at Micro Center for about $1,000. When the cost of making autonomous cars get that low, you're gonna start seeing a lot more of them. In fact, going back to Tesla, their new Model 3 doesn't even have an instrument panel, just has that giant screen in the middle of the car, and many people are saying that that's basically laying the groundwork for it to be a self-driving car in the future. It's coming, people. Kurzweil also predicted general purpose artificial intelligence by 2019. I also covered this in a video about a year ago. You can check it out for more uh, information about what the difference is between general AI and the narrow AI that we're all used to right now. But in terms of timescales, 2019 seems pretty accurate. In March of this year, Google's computer AlphaGo beat a professional championship Go player for the first time. And it's kind of a big deal. Now, if you're not familiar with Go, well, then that makes two of us, but it's basically a Chinese version of chess that's far, far more complicated. 
Computers have been beating people at chess for a while now, but the thing about chess is that there's a finite number of moves and strategies that a computer can memorize and go back to. But Go requires a totally different type of thinking. Each move creates thousands of other moves, so the number of strategies is literally infinite. The only way that a computer can play this game is to literally figure it out as it goes along using an artificial neural network, which is something that's never been done before. This kind of computer learning is essential for a computer to achieve general AI, which looks to be right around the corner right now, for better or for worse. Scientists and futurists often use the thousand dollar mark on computers as a way to show what computers are going to do in the future, simply because that, that's about the amount of money that the average layperson is going to spend on a computer to have in their home. For example, we already have computers that have the ability to calculate things at the same processing speed as the human brain, but only a few people can use them. It's only when that processing power is available in every single home that it really impacts us personally in our lives. And Kurzweil says that by the year 2029, the average computer is gonna be as smart as you are. Unless you're an idiot, in which case, sorry, it may have already lapped you. He also predicted that by the year 2029, it would be illegal for people to actually drive their cars. Now, there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to be true, but I don't think it's totally unbelievable. I can definitely see a rough patch for a while when there are autonomous and human-driven cars on the road, but I don't think it's going to take very long before we see that the computer-driven cars are way safer than the other ones. Once it becomes cheap enough for everybody to convert their cars over to driverless technology, I could totally see the government offering credits or tax breaks to people and eventually just making it the law. I mean, it can already be done for as cheap as $1,000. Imagine how cheap it'll be in 2029. So yeah, I could totally see that happening. And, and it wouldn't be the first time the government has mandated upgrades on cars. You know, they did this back in the day with emission standards and fuel efficiency. A lot of Kurzweil's predictions are all about virtual reality and simulated environments, but it's in the 2030s when this stuff really takes off. Already today, there are people who spend a large amount of their time on online virtual worlds, and virtual reality is really starting to explode into the mainstream right now. Hell, you can enter a virtual world just using your cell phone. With computers as powerful as a human mind in every single home in the world, the ability to create simulated environments that feel and interact exactly like the real thing will be a real thing. And given how addictive today's virtual online worlds are, I mean, just imagine being able to step into a fully immersive environment where maybe you have superpowers or, or you look like a movie star or a supermodel. It's easy to see how people might be more involved in those worlds over time than the real one. So according to Kurzweil, in the 2030s, we've basically got two separate realities. We've got the physical world that involves cars driving us around everywhere we wanna go, and then a virtual world that's probably gonna be 5% gaming, 5% cat videos, and 90% sex. Because let's be honest, when it comes to online innovation, porn always leads the way. There will be orgies. Lots and lots of orgies. But if the 2030s seem impossible to believe, just hold on to your butts, because 2045, all bets are off. Because in 2045, the singularity. Kurzweil adopted the term singularity from the part of the black hole where all physics and human understanding completely breaks apart. It's an apt term. Because the technological singularity is what happens when computers reach artificial superintelligence. Because at that point, the computer sitting on your desktop has more computing power than all human beings on the planet put together. What happens after the technological singularity is complete and total conjecture. But some of the predictions Ray Kurzweil have made include machines becoming conscious and self-aware, and nanotechnology creating what he calls foglets, clouds of microscopic machines that can create any structure, even food, out of thin air. Any device, machine, biological entity, or physical object is possible, and the machines that make them are self-aware and conscious. And human beings will merge with technology to the point that we will cease to be purely biological beings and become transhuman. And once we become transhuman, here come the bathroom laws. Would that mean we're all trannies at that point? Uh, that was wrong. That was, that was bad. Nope. That was bad. The singularity changes everything. And your opinion of what comes after that totally depends on how you feel about technology. Technophobic people will see an apocalyptic, dystopian future in the vein of the Matrix or the Terminator movies. But Kurzweil sees a future with multiple worlds and realities for us to interact inside of. A world without hunger or disease or starvation or death, where we can just explore and create for as long as we are choosing to exist. Which leads us to the predictions that he has for the end of the century. By 2099, Kurzweil believes that machines will be given legal status as conscious entities and biological human beings will become fewer and fewer. 
The ever-increasing rate of mass replication would lead to literally planet-sized computers that would bring dead material, quote-unquote dead material, into consciousness, and as the process spread, the universe itself would come to life. That's insane! But we are living in exponential times. Chart after chart after chart is showing this same exponential curve to our humanity. We've never seen anything like this in the 100,000 year history of our species. To think that this won't change everything fundamentally would be just as insane. For the vast majority of our history, it was assumed that the next generation is going to live basically the same as the last one. Today, we can't even imagine the kind of world that the next generation is going to live in. You know, sometimes I think about the technological advances that are going to happen right outside of my lifespan, the things that I'm going to just miss, and it makes me sad, you know, the things that I'm going to miss out on. It's future FOMO, and it's an emotion that's unique to this specific place in history. Regardless of whether Kurzweil's predictions turn out to be true, we are in the middle of the single most transformative period in human history. And you just have to sit back and be grateful for that. So let's strap on our wingsuits and enjoy it. So I had to be super selective about which predictions that I included in this. There's a whole bunch of them that Kurzweil has done out there, and you can find those in a couple of books I'm going to link down below. One is called The Age of Intelligent Machines, and the other is called The Singularity is Near. Both of them give you a lot more uh, context to his predictions and a lot more of the predictions that I couldn't get to in this video. So now it's your turn. What do you think? Do you think Kurzweil is totally full of crap? A lot of people do. Do you think there's a technological utopia or apocalypse in our future? talk about in the comments. Special thanks to the answer files on Patreon that make this show possible. If you want to support the show and uh, get some access to some exclusive show stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. It starts at just a dollar a month. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share it on your social media channels. And if this is your first time here, I hope I earned a subscribe because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. All right, I got to go catch my whale buzz now. So you guys go out and have an eye opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Take care.